All right, thanks for staying with us. Um, so living above your means means that you are spending more money than you are, than you are earning. Yeah. People are able to do this by recycling on, uh, or rather relying on credit cards, loan, and prior savings to cover their expenses. Now, the opposite of this uh, phrase is to live within one's means, which means that someone is not spending all of his money and is staying out of debt. Now, a lot of Nigerians have mastered the art of living above their means and don't even realize it. So today we're asking, how do I know that I am living above my means? Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 803 You can also tweet at us at Wisho Africa 1 with the hashtag Wisho. All right, so I want to bring in um, Kathleen in a minute. But I want to come to Uti. Uti Elu has joined us via Zoom. Hi. Hi, Uti. We Good miss evening. you. Uti. I miss you too. Uti, my love. Is it possible yeah. for us to live within our means in this country? Please, just be Especially Lagos. I don't know about any other part of Nigeria. <laughs> you know, it's very difficult because one of the unique things of our environment there is that even when you have a budget, so even for the most diligent of us, right, um, there are so many unplanned things. I love the, the, the quote that says, um, uh, I think it was during COVID that it became popular, say, uh, stay, stay inside, debit alert, stay outside. Mm. So, you know, the truth of it is that there's so many things that can happen. You get into a pothole, it's 200K with your mechanic. You Somebody you know, bashes your car, it's 250K. There's so many uncertainties. I mean, it's not like these uncertainties don't e exist anywhere else, but the uniqueness of our environment heightens the risk, increases the risk, rather, um, of those things happening. So um, you have to essentially, if you are a diligent budgeter, you have to budget the unforeseen and the unplanned into your, your budget and your expenses. So it can be quite um, difficult, but I think I like to just categorize it. There are the avoidables, for example, the Owen Bears, the, uh, the what's Ashwabi. it called now? The Ashwabi, mm -hmm. the all those things. That one is preference. If you are that way inclined, then you're spending your money there. Um, but we do have a lot of things that are societal pressures that put pressure on us that it takes the most disciplined of folk not to live um, above their means. And of course, there are very many people that don't even have enough to live. Before you talk of living above your means, there's also a large population of people that fall into that bucket. So we're, we're in an interesting space, I think. Mm. How about you, Glory? Our accountant. <laughs> Is it possible? Well, it's it's possible, though difficult, especially when you mention Lagos, <laughs> because as Uti rightly said, so many things um, unplanned, unplanned expenses. Expen expenses might come up here and there. But it's possible, and also discipline, I think, plays a role. Example: So I have people that will say, "Glory, please help me keep this money. I don't want to touch it because if I have, if I hold it, I'll spend it." And after two days, so they will give me the money and say, "Okay, I want, I want you to hold it for maybe three months." After two days, they'll call, "Ah, something came up. Please give me this money. I need to, I need to do something." So it's, it's, um, it's not an easy thing to do, honestly. But I think that's the reason why we have. Kathleen, <laughs> to help us and tell us how we can make Mary, this possible. Mary, should I even ask you the question? <laughs> <laughs> there, there's no need to ask. I, I, it's very difficult, I must say. And um, I think social media as a whole hasn't really helped us in that aspect because it seems like your desires just keep growing. And I mean, there's, it takes a lot of discipline as well to understand that, oh, okay, I know you want to be at a certain place. With time, you get there. But even as you're planning with time, the bill, the actual bills that you even need to settle, they're just coming back. Blue. So sometimes it's like an escape to say, oh, you know what? If I die, I die. Let me just, <laughs> that, that, that. Yeah, so let me just spend this on, you know, and live, like we live by the edge. 
Right? Like it's crazy. So after, they, after, they, after they hit me today, my mouth swell up. I can't carry myself go restaurant. Eh hey! You are sad. So I mean it, 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 it takes a lot of discipline. It takes a lot of discipline. And trust me, honestly speaking, this is not us just trying to maybe but really living in Lagos is extreme sports. <laughs> like literally what you would pay. I mean the other day I wanted to put air in my tire. And the vocal like the shock. The organizer told me, Madam, is 500. I said, for what? Do you know that I had a huge culture shock when I went back to Kaduna in December, last <laughs> no, upper year, to see my parents. I spent Christmas um, in, in, um, in Kaduna. And my mom said, oh, that I needed to put air in the tire. Okay, she now gave me 200 now for the four tires. I said, Mommy, I don't understand. Was he said, no, it's 50 50 now. I said, no. <laughs> 50 50 now. As I then were doing 200 now per tire in Lagos. It's 50 50 now. Do you understand? So now, I now go to a vulcanizer and he says 500 now. I looked at him. I thought he was joking. Until I now, went, I thought maybe I was in a posh area. Let me go to my, <laughs> my local village where I'm coming from. I said, Madam, ah, money don't increase. On. I said, when? Since you, when? Do you want to look at housing? Ha, don't even go there. Let me bring in Kathleen. Kathleen is the owner of and the CEO of um, Kudimata Nigerian Limited, um, Penny Consults, Penny Consult Limited, and Poi Finishing School. She was the executive director and chief marketing officer at Hope um, PS Bank and the deputy general manager at Keystone Bank Nigerian Limited. She also worked in key managerial positions at Access Bank PLC for 15 years, extending her um, her extensive banking experience to over 26 uh, to over 26 years. Now, Kathleen has established herself as a change agent by promoting basic financial education in Nigeria through an institution called um, Kudimata, a financial community where money questions, problems, and concerns are addressed, just like the one we are going to be addressing now, Kudimata. <laughs> Thank you, Kathleen, for joining us again. <laughs> so, Kathleen, I mean, I saw you nodding your head as we were talking because, Oma, um, it's not easy. First of all, let me ask this question. Is it possible first, before how... How before we will not get to how I know, because me, I know I'm living above my means, right? Is it possible for us to actually live um, on a budget? Is it possible? It is actually possible to live on a budget. Hmm. So it's actually possible for you to live within your, your means. means. Hmm. There are a lot of factors that affect us living beyond our means. You know, this means, what it means is what you earn. Hmm. So what I earn is different from what she earns different from what Gloria and different from what you earn, and different from what Uti earns. So if I want to live the same way that Gloria lives, I will most likely live above my means. That's behaving like the Jones. Mm. So that is a key factor that we must, must put into consideration in living or budgeting for um, our lives. Kathleen, do you know some people don't earn a salary, but they are living where? Living large. <laughs> Okay. So where is the means coming from? So they have means. Mm. You know, means is income. Mm. The people who are dependent on you, you give them money. So they have to live within that means. That is the means. So if you give somebody 20,000 naira on a month on basis, that's that person's income. The expense must not go beyond that 20. So you must work within that budget. Oh, so at the month end, I'll have John give me money, I'll have Paul for those who don't earn money. There are different streams of income. That's income. And that is the means. Income is means. All right? Well, so true. it is actually very possible to live within your means. Location affects it, though. Location. But that means still works within your location because income you earn in Lagos is different. You just said Vulcanizer would take 50 naira up north in Lagos. The means or the environment within Lagos have been factored into the amount, the, the cost of because that. Because even the space he pays for. Yes. So you can actually live within your means. Hmm. There are certain things that you need to do to live within your means. Cut off excesses. Hmm. Now yeah. what Uti was talking about? Cut off excesses. Transportation takes a huge cost of our means. Uh, so you have to work on your... Look for um, jobs or the various yeah. source of income within your geography where you reside. But it's not possible, Kathleen. 
Because again, sometimes where the where the good jobs are, because I've seen people, they work in Victoria Island, they live at Akumo, they live at uh, 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 what's it called, Festac. You understand? So they can do carpooling. So they have enough people within. So you know that this financial, you have to actually educate yourself, understand that this is my pocket, this is what it is. We are five or six coming from this area, coming to VI. Let's use Lagos, for example. All of you carpool, and you come to the Lagos. And sometimes you have some people who live within um, the environment where they work and return back to their distant location. Where, At weekends. Where com uh, commuting costs them uh, a huge sum of their income. So you have those people staying within those geography. Hmm. So it is actually 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 possible to mm. live within your means and then you don't shop where you think uh, you want to buy tomato in vi when you live in akumojo the price is different because there's rental there are other costs that have been factored, built, factored into uh, the cost of that tomato in vi and in akumojo so mm. it's hard to take mm. it's, it's a strong mm. thing to swallow um, so um I know those of us here will understand what she's saying. Let's bring it down to maybe the market women that don't even know what budget is. They don't probably, they, they can't even like put together their income to say, how do they start understanding that? How, um, how can they understand how to put, um, understand how to put their resources or what their, their business or their income, their daily income together to say, okay, this is what, I earn in a week so that with that they can plan. So in, from what you said, budgeting is a huge part of planning in order for you to be able to stay within your means of expenditure. So how do they start? How do they even understand it? Uh, you'll be very surprised. Yeah, they are the Mama will plan better yeah. than Yes. You'll be so surprised. Mama will plan. Mama knows. Ah, Mama separates money. That thing Mama puts that... You know, Mama would wrap money in bundles. Mm. Mama would put, this is for this, this is for that, this is for me to go back to market, this is for school fees, this is for... Mama has a budget, Mama plans. Mama would shop. The people who have problems of this and uh, spending above their means. Now us. It's not Mama. Mama will finish in the market, make 1,000 Naira in profit or in profit, removing all other expenses. Mama will know where to buy the small tomato, the small meat, and the small, and go home and cook. It is you who want to eat brocotto at the <laughs> cow tail and everything, when you don't even earn that money. So Mama is fine when it comes to um, um, living within means. Sometimes some mamas don't even go home. They stay within that location where they work. So that rental income really... Um, doesn't, it's there, but it does not really affect Mama so much. Transportation, you see when they are coming from uh, the villages or the farms or the interland where they go and get their things, you see how they carpool. One Mama will not go to markets on her own. They will go in group, put money together and buy in bulk because they understand budgeting. Mm. Okay, so... Um for the people that want to be big girls, since they are the ones that don't know the budgeting, what, um, for me, I would say, what kind of investments can we, can you start off? So you have a young graduate who, you know, you just finished, or you're doing NYSC, you know, what advice would you give? I, I think I'm more of the advice of um, saving and little investments. Um, and increasing your streams of income. Yeah, and increasing your streams of income because if if you desire a certain lifestyle, and like I said, social media has helped to you know put everything. So because I'll, I'll give myself for instance, sometimes I find myself com um, I find myself comparing myself to people who are in their forties, like and then one day I just sat down and I was like, Mary, do you realize that this person is maybe forty five, and you are how old? So, okay, there's hope for you if at least at this stage, you're, you know, you're thinking, you, you're going to get, there's a, there's a sure banker that you're going to get there. If only you just be a bit patient, like you are aware of, you know, what you want and you're striving for it. Despite you're striving for it, you're a bit too, 
I won't say now, 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 but take a step back and look at it. This person is 40 something. You're in your 20s. You've got a long way to go. You're going to meet up because you're on the right track, definitely. So just calm down. So, what kind of advice, you know, in terms of like savings, investments, would you give <laughs> young people like us, you know, because it's, I must say, it's, it's really difficult and streams of income is really what has, what has helped. I've seen young people who they're doing their nine to five. They have, you know, a side business on, you know, at least that side business. If you make, you know, 100, 200, you can't be able to buy bone straight. You'll still be happy, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> you, have asked, you have asked the question. You have answered the question. So you have actually just helped me. What all I would say, you have just said, and you have actually spoken to the youth. Patience is key. Mm. Okay. Patience is key. You budget different streams of income, key. And you start to budget or save for different projects and different things. Mm. You've answered your you've answered the question. Okay. Well, I'll come to you, Uti. <laughs> well, I want us to go on a very short break, right? When we come back from the break, Uti, I'll come to you. Stay with us, we'll be right back. <laughs> All right, thanks for staying with us now. If you just tuned in, we're discussing the topic, how do I know I'm living above my means? And we have Kathleen with us. Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-4663. You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa 1 with the hashtag Wayshow. All right, Uti, over to you. Okay, so, um, I mean, an interesting conversation so far. And I'm trying to think that from the perspective of when we talk about living... Um, above the means. I'd, I'd be interested to hear um, the perspective on being disciplined enough to stay away from, like we said, the cultural norms and issues and what it takes to actually be able to manage your fund. So in the current realities, right, the money may not even be enough, but how do we manage the funds that we have today and what are the pitfalls that we need to look out for so that we don't inadvertently end up on that side of the track where we're living above our means? So I'm gifting money or I'm helping people. And then I look back and I'm like, oh, wow, I've spent more than I plan to spend. How do we avoid those kind of issues? OK. Um, first, discipline, just like you said. And to avoid it is actually to understand self. You need to understand yourself and your money structure. When you understand yourself and your money structure, then you are able to plan. When you plan, um, you plan for, you know, you are current. So current now will really not matter. You have to plan for your tomorrow and your future. So that's where your savings come in. You have to learn to save no matter how much you earn. You must be able to set aside something. And in our current situation, other streams of income are uh, most desirable. Because like you've said, it is most unlikely that one stream of income would carry you to, um, uh, to, to allow you pick all your bills or to enable you pick all your bills. So if that's, if that has it me, other streams of income, as simple as um, the digital space has helped us with so many streams of um, in things that we can do, streams of income that we can get. You can simply bake at home your income from um, other streams of income added to what you have um, earned from employment or even your entrepreneurial work. Then you save. You cut off those excesses. You stop to live um, like the Joneses, living, following other people, wanting to be other well, people. You know you're going to make a lot of enemies, yeah? It doesn't matter. <laughs> because guess what? If you lose that money, that income, and you don't make it, Jesus Christ, everybody will be your enemy. Because it's the simple money that you have that you're able to pick your bill that pulls people to you. Once you lose that, that's it. People, think of people who have lost their jobs, their work, and they stop earning, making income. The Your numbers friends of disappear. friends that they have thins out. So you must actually work to improve and increase and plan for tomorrow. That's the plan. Savings. Cut down expenses. All those excesses. Take them out. Reduce 
your cost of living and save. I think that's... You see, that cost of living thing uh, is a bit of... is a tricky one because... Okay, so I was going to ask that. With the current economic situation where, for instance, maybe if I had a million naira in my account three, four years ago, I was a big girl, like a savings that I saved. Today, that million naira is depreciated because of the dwindling economy, right? So if you tell me to save, I've saved... But the, the buy power of that one million naira 10 years or five years ago that I saved it is not the same buy power that I have today, right? So I don't know how um, savings will help me. That's number one. I don't know how it's going to help me. If I saved money and all of a sudden, the, why the money is still there, complete, but it had depreciated in value. Um, streams of income, yes. But really, in, in, in all fairness, except, I don't even know how to explain it, except these streams of income are really, really um, tangible. It really doesn't go that far, right? Except maybe you, you are really earning big time Forex, you know, those kind of transactions. With the economy today, I'm not benchmarking it with anything. Because the cost of um, items, right, what I would have bought maybe 4,000 naira before, I'm buying it almost 16,000 or even 20,000 naira today. So the, 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 the living expenses is on a rise. Housing that you talked about, living, I mean, just in your house, apart from the landlord pulling at you on rental increments, there's also the increment on your bills, your electricity, you know, you've, of course, we know what the drama is happening around the fuel situation, you know, and all of that. So there's a lot that is just, you know, attacking know. that income. So even if you say, okay, I am diligent, I am prudent, I am do all of these things, it's still, you can't really survive like that. You have to just find a way to, you know, make up for some of these, um, what's it called, shortfalls that you would have. Okay. That is true. We have a lot of things tagging on or pulling on our income. A lot. But guess what? You've, you are actually just trying to live like others. You know... That's 30,000 Naira. Um, so a job man, so let's use all our minimum wage, is 30,000 Naira for, a, I think, the lowest level um, civil servant. It is expected that that um, um, civil servant, bad as it may, it is really, 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 don't get me wrong, but that money is, um, is small, <laughs> it's low. <laughs> Is small, but then what would you do? You would still have to plan to live within it, not to have five, six, how many children now? Because that's where you 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 are actually just your life. You need to understand yourself. Kathleen, even with one child, <laughs> thirty thousand naira hey. is too much. But then you will not go. You will not. The debt will not be so much, mm. and you will not go so much at begging. Because you would have planned. But you're still there. At 30, <laughs> at 30, depending on your location. Mm. You know, location, location still counts. A 30,000 maybe in far village area may not be the same as a 30,000 naira um, income in Lagos. You know that. Mm -hmm. So location counts. But in all of these two, you still have to learn to mm -hmm. live within that money. And that income, you know, that 30,000 is not all that they, you support, everybody supports them. Sorry to say, but uh, our environment, you know, we live in a communal environment. We support ourselves. Mm -hmm. We support ourselves. So that person who earns 30, that's not the only um, income. So that's not the only means. Hmm. There are other means that are added. But what is it that they do with these means? That's what is important. Hmm. Nobody actually is still 30. Maybe nobody, but there are other streams of income. Can I ask, so how, how, do, you, how do you grow? How do you elevate? Because for me, it just sounds like suffering that is never, ever going to end. So, like, 
you see that you, you just aspire, you just hope that one day, you know, your income would increase. <laughs> you, you work, you know. work, you don't just aspire, you work, you know, in all of this, you have to improve yourself. Yeah. For you too, you know, there are different scales of, for the uh, people who earn that minimum. For that one. You, ha you still have to improve yourself. And when you improve yourself, your income improves. Mm -hmm. If you know, like in Nigeria, there are different cadres of... Um, and so it starts from that minimum 30 up the way to millions, mm -hmm. depending on your um, certificate, your, the way you've improved yourself. Mm -hmm. So education still matters. And you will now ask me education. Uh, there are schools that are free education. Online. So, yes, okay. not just even the online, even the free education. The government schools mm. are there and hey. they are free. Kathleen, so if, hey, oh, there are some standards uh, that we cannot. Hey, okay, you so know what? Let's take on it. So, <laughs> hey, hey, Uti, let me come to you <laughs> quickly before, you, before we run. Well, I think. Uh, <laughs> It's a sobering picture to hear everything that we've discussed today because even with the locality and all that I was listening to, Catherine, even with just saying um, uh, government schools are free, they're still attached expenses. Mm. So <laughs> it almost sounds like it's impossible. Mm. But um, I think that the only thing that I could take away from this, and it's not necessarily a comment, is just m multiple streams of income. Your I side hustle has to have a side hustle. Income. I um, didn't know. <laughs> so I think that's all I'll take away. And the side the hustle has to be yeah. as heavy as your real hustle. I hope. Yeah. No, the side hustle has to have its own side hustle. Mm. So it's exponential. Mm. So at the minimum, three streams of at the minimum of income. Three. Yeah. Three powerful three, streams of income. Three at the minimum. In the environment like, Nigeria where we situation are. situation will not even allow you to have the three powerful <laughs> because like <laughs> one is literally. Mm. Go ahead. Yes. Um. This is from Daniel Alo, I think. Ilo, yeah. Ilo. Good evening, my beautiful ladies, sisters of what are you saying? How do I know I'm living above my means? You can only know if you are living above your means if you make extra cash outside your monthly salary. Salary earners will be affected by their own budget. Your guest made mention of cutting excesses. That is where discipline and the idea of cutting your code according to your material. Sister Uwa. I think I am in the same boat with you. <laughs> After Saturday, the 18th of March, I think I want to be through with election and politics. Politics in Nigeria has been so it, it is total nightmare and disaster. I can never be proud of Nigerians' politics. All right. Go ahead, Mary. How do I know that I'm living above my means? This is an interesting topic. First, if I want to live within my means, I must first of all advise myself that I am not in competition with anyone but my very self. In that regard, I must learn to cut my coat according to my size. This is from Sanctus. Not size, according to your material. material. <laughs> I was according going to, to your that, income, yes. your means. Because it is actually your size. your size. If you want to follow your size and you are size 50, <laughs> and your material can only sew for size 5, wow. then there's problem. So you actually need to cut your cloth according, according to, to your fabric, your, mm -hmm. your material. So Kathleen, if you had one thing to say to anybody right now that is listening, do you understand? What would you say to that person? Because me, I know I'm living above my means. How do I stop living above my means? I would say it is a difficult thing. We all would strive is discipline. Discipline first is key. It's difficult. It's easier said than done. But we must all strive to cut off excesses and stop to behave like others. Our own goal is our own goal, not the next person's goal. Don't live somebody else's life, somebody else's lifestyle. Cut your coat according to your income and your lifestyle. Create your own path and live within it. And don't forget, extra streams of income and you must save. Pay yourself. Save. So if you still save? Must save for tomorrow. Don't forget today is here already. Uti, you, you agree with that tomorrow. that we should save money? <laughs> Ah, we don't have a choice. We have to save money. Are you so? Yeah, we don't have a choice because um, <clears throat> it's worse. I, I really love the way that we've put it to say today is here already. So today is, think about it that today is lost. So just try and plan for tomorrow so tomorrow is better. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely like this. So ladies, who is going to start first? Mary, are you taking a new leaf? Eh? Hmm? Oh, eh? <laughs> well, 
You, you are an accountant. You don't have a choice. You don't have a choice. It's you're, sometimes you're a not student. difficult for, for... No, but I think I have, I have watched that. I have to but, be. It's very, very important. Before, ha, ha, people have to trust me, so I need to start with myself, obviously. Mm. So... How about you, Mary? I think I'm thinking of how I can earn more. <laughs> that's my. That's really my own. I, like I mean, you. but when you earn more, your lifestyle you spend increases, more. and then you have to save more. It's same thing. It's and that vicious circle. But but let's earn more, cause cause <laughs> I, I I I don't know, but from like earn more. Yeah, Just earn, more. earn more. Just let Give me more earn money. more. Spend more. More <laughs> money. Let's be curtailing it. I mean, we're still, we, you always have to do curtail it. Look at that. Expenses. <laughs> So it's more money, more spending. Our money, you don't know that. That's what I said. Money is for the spending. But mm. thank you so much, Kathleen. Let's I think we've had a fantastic conversation. We'll keep bringing the conversation around money issues because I think finance is very key. Uh, whether you like it or not, um, everything is, you know, almost Fragile. hitting everybody. So let's just find means to help ourselves and all of that. It's not easy, honestly. It's not easy. People are just asking for money left, right, and center. You don't even have the money to give. It is well. Thank you so much, Kathleen. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Mary, thank Glory, you. and thank you, Uti. All right, so before we go, ensure you follow us, of course, all our social media handles at Wayshow Show Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and more importantly, follow all our engagements on social media, like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. So if you missed our very important quote, here it is again. Money does not dictate your lifestyle. It's what you do with it that gets... What you do with it, rather, it's what, what you do, do to what it. you do to get it and how you manage your finances that determines your lifestyle. Right? Mary says she wants more extra income. I don't know what I want yet. I'll tell you people next week. <laughs> See you guys on Monday. <laughs> Bye. Oh my god. <laughs>